Today, we will be teaching you the chemistry of photography. It's a little intimidating at first, but it's important to understand that the whole process is just a matter of redox reactions. They are the reason that photography exists. First, let's get into some history. A photograph is defined as using light to record the image of an object. It is a combination of the Greek word photos and graphene that mean light and to write. The first idea of a camera was conjured by Leonardo da Vinci around 1519. This process required images to lay on a glass plate and then retrace. However, the first practical and working camera was made by a French inventor named L.J.M. de Gere in 1839. His process was setting the camera's images on well-polished silver-plated copper, referred to at the time as daguerreotypes. These early photographs were created using redox reactions between silver and iodide fields. Together, this formed a light-sensitive silver iodide on top of the well-polished plate. Bright areas of the photo were formed through light exposure, which decomposed the silver iodide into silver. To perfect these bright areas, the plate was treated with heated mercury fumes. Since these cameras required a very long exposure time, there was a need to create a camera that could take portraits of people without having them have to sit for hours. Henry Fox Talbot, Sir John Herschel, Louis Desir Blancard Edvard, Frederick Scott Archer, Professor Hamilton Smith, Joseph Wilson Swan, Carl Click, and August and Louis Lemire helped in improving the photography process to reach what we have today. Today's camera film is far more efficient and has better quality than ever before. Modern film has a bottom layer of plastic to protect the film while still keeping it flexible. It is then covered with a thin layer of gelatin filled with millions of grains of silver bromide. As light hits the film, a redox reaction occurs between the silver and bromide ions. The equation is given below. Now let's see what happens as the camera takes that infamous click when taking a black and white photo. First, as the shutter is opened, light passes through the lens and hits the silver bromide on this film, activating the grains that expose the area. By the energy of the light, the electrons will bounce off the bromide ions and will be iodized to form elemental bromide. At the same time, these electrons from the bromide ions are received by the silver ions, reducing them to become silver elemental atoms. The redox reaction continues the conversion to silver using the silver atoms formed from the exposure of catalysts. More of the bromide is activated where more light is received, yet once developed they become darker areas. Where there is little to no light received, no silver atoms form, later becoming transparent. This film is developed into a negative, where the excess silver bromide and bromine are washed off. How these images are developed is even more interesting. The film from the camera is brought into a dark room where it is placed into a canister and filled with a developer called hydroconine or sometimes pyrogol. Here is an example of a chemical redox reaction. From a chemical perspective, this is a reducing agent. This solution reduces the silver ions to silver atoms, avoiding reacting with the portions of grains that were not hit by the light. After this, light and dark areas are visible.
Next, another solution containing thiosulfite ions, often referred to as a hyposolution, is added to the canister to react with the unreacted silver ion. The product of this reaction is then washed away, avoiding unreduced silver ions from reducing and darkening over time. The canister is rinsed, ridding the film of any excess solutions known as soluble complexes. The negative or colored inverse is then produced. Finally, Light is projected through the negative onto photographic paper, forming the photopositive, the same image that was captured on the camera. As for color photos, light-sensitive dyes are simply mixed with the silver bromide layers on the film, a slightly more complex process, but still involves just as much, if not more, chemistry. Thank you so much for watching this video. You are now well-read in the chemistry of photography.